Shane, the whole world condemns you. Someone had leaked Ramon's story. Even without proof, the damage was done. Help me, Padre. You are beyond help. I can do nothing for you. Listen to me, old man. Do you believe that I could hurt a child? That I would risk losing my life's work for a small amount of money? Do you truly believe that? No, no, I don't. Good. Then you will hold a mass. Invite the most powerful and influential people in Bolivia. Defend me against these lies. Swear on the Santissima Muerte that what they say is false. You are not coming? No. I have business to take care of. All priests like to hear themselves talk, don't they? But as the saying goes, talk is cheap. El Cardenal knew this was true. His people were barely surviving, and he wanted to do something. He had to help those in need. He didn't care where the support came from. But there were others who thought he was making deals with the devil. He was cast out. He lost his family, his friends. Lo perdió todo. When I found him, he was a broken man. I brought him into Santa Blanca to preach the truth of the new faith. For we are wed to death from the moment we are born, and we must come to love her more than we love our lives. Sacred and blessed death, the goddess of darkness can free you from sickness and evil. Do you offer your heart and soul over to her? He baptized me in the true faith. He is my counselor, my conscience. I do. The only person I truly trust with my soul. Influence, the fine art of persuasion, the winning of hearts and minds, the grabbing of the short hairs and holding on. Santa Blanca, smart fucks that they are, figured it out. It's not enough to control the events. You have to control the story. El Cardinal, a true believer in Santa Muerte. If you're trying to influence people, it's an advantage to have God on your side. In this case, the skinny lady, the white sister, the saint of holy death, Santa Muerte herself. Because, let's be honest, there's some things even God won't do for you. El Cardinal, he's on the radio, TV, live appearances, concerts. If El Sueño controls the population through bribery and fear, El Cardinal holds them with something much more powerful, their souls. How would you like to avoid eternal damnation? Well, luckily, all you have to do is support the Santa Blanca cartel, and you will. On the other end of the public-private scale is Ramon Feliz, the narco-blogger. Don't let the quiet demeanor fool you. He's the SB's social media maven. He's their digital game. A tragic case, Feliz. He used to be a serious journalist, trying to expose the cartel for the psychotic sociopathic dirtbags that they are. But they turned him. Now, he cranks out SB propaganda like his life depended on it. For his blog, for Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. If you're not into El Cardinal, you're into Feliz. They get you both ways. These two are the yin and yang of the Santa Blanca influence machine. The sacred and the profane, the public and the private, the heart and the mind. Why are we meeting here? El Cardinal's gonna give a sermon to the Bolivian public to calm them about the child trafficking, but we've got the means to discredit the cartel. Show this video to that congregation, things will melt down quick. After that, snatch and grab Cardinal, bring him to the RP. Roger that, we'll see you there. Let's see what His Holiness has to say to Bo. What the hell happened with DJ Perico? <laughs> loco with Pacatari's speech and shit. So he looks like a bitch in the other now. I bet he feels like one. I'm engaging take much. Our priest has taken a vow of silence. You should actually read that when you're in prison. La conozco. No te apures. 
If a sailor chooses to worship at my church, if he chooses to pray with me, it is my duty to God to help the flock find its way. It does not make me a criminal. No. Money laundering makes you a criminal. Your church is built on a foundation of trafficking in white powder and kids. I felt horrible about those children. If that's true, then confess. Right here, with me. Absolve yourself of your sins. May God forgive me. In, In the name of the Father, the and of the Son, and the Holy Santo. Ghost. The image was broken. The dream was crumbling. My church was dying out. Many of my men were leaving me. The campesinos were no longer afraid to slander my name. Those who hated me said I did all of this out of pride. The mausoleum, the websites, the Bible. They said I did it out of vanity. But if they could have seen it, if everyone could have seen my dream, they would have understood. I did it for them, for the sicarios. The farmers, the miners. I did it so they would dream of a better life for themselves. So they could envision how great they could become. How great they could make Santa Blanca. And how great Santa Blanca could make them. But when you get a glimpse behind the curtain, then you realize that the magic is nothing more than smoke and mirrors. And the glory which you once aspired to is nothing but a sham. The mama and papa Reed raised little Boyer on apple pie and the Red Sox. Since graduating from high school, Boyer Boston Reed has done everything he could to shed that clean-cut image of his youth. Looking for adventure, Reed left his hometown of Lexington, Massachusetts, and became a bush pilot in South America. Medical records also tell a saga of gonorrhea, Hep C, and herpes. As a pilot, he stayed clean for a number of years, but one fateful day, he met El Boquita. Within days, Reed was flying Santa Blanca's coke to Georgia, Florida, and the Carolinas. With the drug smuggling came the money, and Reed loves to spend it. He's chummy with Bukita, who gave him that nickname Boston because of his accent. Make no mistake, Reed may play hard, but he works harder. Now based out of Kiwani, he coordinates all of Santa Blanca's smuggling by air. He uses temporary airstrips, and his own people don't know where they are until the last possible moment. When he's working, Boston Reed is impossible to locate. And you're going to find him. I'm not going to talk. Good. I don't want you to. I want you to listen. I want to tell you a story. Long ago, there was a very beautiful princess named Nydia. And one day, Princess Nydia met a very powerful king named El Sueño. Nydia loved El Sueño. He was like the father she never had, and all Nydia ever wanted was to make him proud of her. Nydia was so afraid of letting down Sueño that she even sacrificed the love of her life. The father of her child. All so that Sueño would love her. But it wasn't enough. It was never enough. You know nothing. I know one thing. I know that once I sign this, you will be extradited to the United States and you will never, ever see that little girl again. She will go into the foster care system and in five years, she won't even remember who you are. You and I have both been there, Nydia. We both know what it's like. We both know the fucked up shit that goes on in those families. Do you really want Valeria to go through what you did? Who's it gonna be? Valeria or Sueño? I want an S visa. Witness relocation for both of us. And I want full immunity. 
trato. Sweetheart, you get me sueño, I will give you eternal life. My trafficking network was dismantled. No more cocaine came in. No more money went out. The drugs that remained lay there wrapped in cellophane, rotting away, becoming worthless. My men wondered where their next payout was going to come from. I had spent years building these routes. Billions of dollars in manpower, transportation, relationships, all gone. Including the beauty queen. I gave Nidia Flores everything, and she paid me back by running like a coward, instead of dying like royalty. Now she would spend the rest of her life serving the Americans. She killed her child's father for nothing. Isn't it amazing? You remove a few buchones, and the machine falls to pieces. You're never gonna see Antonio again. Ever. He's on his way to a prison in the United States, where he will spend the rest of his life. For the next 70 years, he will stare at the same walls, he will piss in the same toilet, and he'll have the same conversation with himself until his brain finally breaks. Life is over for him. You, on the other hand, have choices. If you want, you can leave right now. Of course, we both know they will kill you before you even cross the street. What if I don't know anything? Look both ways before you cross the street. Shit. I got a body here. It's that rebel leader, Amaru. We freed that guy from the cartel. I'm trying to call Pack, but it ain't going through. Think Pack and his rebels threw down with the cartel, and Pack had to run? It doesn't look like there was much of a fight here. I'm calling Bowman. Maybe she's heard from Pack. Bowman, we've got a situation. We set up a meet with Pack and one of his guys. With Pack? Where are you? Listen, instead of Pack, we found Amaru. He's been killed. Have you heard from Pack Katari? Pack Katari is here with me in Pukara. Bowman? Bowman! The hell is going on here? No idea, but we gotta get to Bowman, fast. Never thought I'd hear myself say this about a CIA officer, but if they hurt her, I'll burn this whole fucking country down to get back at them. Right there with you, man. Bowman said Pack was with her, then the call got cut off. Might be the sad phone dropped the call. Might be Pack fucked us. Weaver, can you track Bowman's last known in Pukara? Got it. 